हेलो फ्रेंड्स यर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द रिवर्सिबल कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर प्रोसेस इन डिटेल लेट अस गेट स्टार्टेड रिवर्सिबल कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर प्रोसेस ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एस आइसोबारिक प्रोसेस Now, again in case of reversible constant pressure process or isobaric process, first I will draw the diagram explaining what is the meaning of this. now in order to explain the constant pressure process here we have a diagram in which there is a cylinder which consists of a piston now this piston is movable it can slide freely inside the cylinder so here we have a piston now this piston is not fixed it can move and what happens when we are heating the gas supplying heat from outside these gases they would be expanding because of the increase in temperature and when the gases expand they would be exerting a force on the piston and because of that this piston will try to lift up but here we are keeping a weight on this piston to apply a constant pressure it means when the gases are heated the gases they expand and when they are expanding the pressure is dropping so to maintain a constant pressure over this piston we are placing a weight which would exert a constant pressure on this gas so that even though we are heating the pressure would remain constant and there is a displacement of the piston as we can see here that displacement i have denoted with x now because of this displacement as the boundary of the piston has moved or the boundary of the gases they have moved it means some amount of work is done if the volume would have been constant then the amount of work done would have been zero but here as we can see since the piston is moving by a displacement x so force into displacement will give us the amount of work done by these gases onto the piston next i am going to show this process on pv diagram which gives the amount of work done so here we have p v that is pressure volume diagram so here we have a constant pressure process pressure at point number 1 and point number 2 both are same so p1 is equal to p2 but volume goes on increasing from v1 to v2 and whatever the area which we are getting under this line which is horizontal line showing constant pressure this area is nothing but the amount of work done by the gases so 
so this shaded area shows the area under the curve which is 1 to 2 and this area under the curve is nothing but the amount of work done which we are getting from the system next I can say that this is the amount of work done which we are getting from the system I'll start with the pressure volume and temperature relation that is relation between pressure volume and temperature now for state 1 I can write it as P1 V1 upon T1 for state 2 P2 V2 upon T2 now these entire terms are constants so I will denote it by constant C next as the pressure from point 1 to point 2 it is same so P1 is equal to P2 I can cancel both of them and so the relation becomes V1 upon T1 therefore V1 upon T1 is equal to V2 upon T2 this relation can be written since pressure is constant that is P1 is equal to P2 now after getting the pressure volume and temperature relation next is to get the amount of work done so work done during constant pressure process that work done will be given by since here we can see that from this diagram here the height I can say it is either P1 or P2 anyone because both are same into this difference of volume now here V2 minus V1 is the difference in volume that is here I get this base multiplied by this height which is pressure so the amount of work done will be equal to that is pressure into change in volume and here I can mention since P1 is equal to P2 I will say that they are equal to P so this is the amount of work done which we are getting in terms of constant pressure process also called as isobaric process now as I have denoted work done here which is P into V2 minus V1 I can also say that it has come from the relation that since work done is nothing but integral of P into dV and here since the pressure is constant it will be integration of change in volume which is from V1 to V2 so finally that will give me P into V2 minus V1 so this is another way of understanding that how we are getting the amount of work done either from the diagram or by using this relation next is change in internal energy that change in internal energy is denoted by delta u which is equal to m c v t2 minus t1 here i'll say that assuming mass which is small m as 1 kg so the change in internal energy will be equal to cv t2 minus t1 now 
after getting work done and change in internal energy now we can get the amount of heat transfer during this process that is how much heat we are supplying so therefore heat transfer which is the fourth part in this heat transfer is given by the general formula which is work done plus change in internal energy therefore q is equal to work done it was p into v2 minus v1 plus change in internal energy can also be written as either we write it in the form of cv t2 minus t1 or change in internal energy means final internal energy minus initial internal energy it can be written in this way as well so therefore q will be equal to if i multiply pressure with volume 2 that will give me p2 v2 next minus if this pressure is multiplied with v1 so that is p1 v1 and although both the values are same p1 p2 is equal to p plus u2 minus u1 next i'll combine p2 v2 plus u2 minus p1 v1 now since here i'll take minus common so inside the bracket instead of minus u1 i will be having plus u1 so these two terms i am getting here therefore pv which is called as the amount of work done work done plus internal energy gives another third term which is called as enthalpy and here i'll write down that it is small amount of enthalpy which is h2 minus h1 why this is small amount of enthalpy because in case of internal energy we have taken mass as 1 kg so instead of total enthalpy here we are getting a small amount of enthalpy which is h2 minus h1 and after this here the heat transfer can also be written as in the form of small q instead of capital q it can be written as small q because small q signifies the value of heat transfer in terms of per kg because here the mass has been taken as 1 kg so i can say that the unit of heat transfer will be kilojoule per kg next similarly the total heat transfer that will be capital q is equal to capital h2 minus capital h1 and the unit will be in terms of kilojoule that is total amount of enthalpy at state 2 minus total amount of enthalpy at state 1 it means in the formula we are going to take the value of mass so if small amount of enthalpy is multiplied by mass it becomes the total enthalpy which gives us the total amount of heat transfer so in short for heat transfer in case of constant pressure process it is given by the difference of enthalpy or we can say the change in enthalpy and finally i can say that also q or the total amount of heat transfer since it is change in enthalpy here i'll write down total amount of enthalpy so therefore this total amount of enthalpy is given by mcp t2 minus t1 so this is another relation of the amount of heat transfer for constant pressure process so in this video we have seen constant pressure process or isobaric process in detail